Praise the Lord. Hallelujah today. Praise God. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Almighty God. Hallelujah. And many people today in the world, they don't believe that. And many Christians today who profess with their mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, they don't live like he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. They just use him like a prop. or And, and they don't really commit their lives totally unto the Lord. Well, I'm telling you right now, in my own life, in my own life, my life was a wreck. It was a mess. And I was in a backslidden state from 1985 till 1994 for nine years. And the Lord graciously turned me around, turned me around because my life was going nowhere. Oh, yeah, I had a good job. Yeah, I was making good money. But, you know, I was spending it all on myself all on myself and drugs and, and filth of this world. You see, the life of Jesus is something inside. It's, it's Christ coming in and making us a new creation where we know that we are born anew from heaven. Hallelujah. We are born anew from heaven. We are new creatures. We are no longer of this world. See, our spirit man is resurrected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's resurrected. And the life of God, the Almighty God, comes, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and lives inside of us. Hallelujah. Lives inside of us. Oh, praise God. And the Lord wants us to remember that He is the one who saves us. He is the one who wants to live His life through us. And in order to do that, the Holy Spirit does a work in us to move us out of the way so that the life of the Almighty God, the Almighty Jehovah, the God of heaven and earth, the Almighty God can manifest through us. Now, He's the Almighty God. He rules over every angel in heaven. He rules over every demonic force in this universe. He rules over everything. Hallelujah. Heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. And he lives in us. And he wants us to regain and to have, which he has already given. If you're born anew from heaven, if you are born anew from heaven, by the blood of the Lamb and the regeneration of the Holy Ghost, he's given us back the dominion. Hallelujah. And we have the power. Hallelujah. To, to submit to God, to, to submit, to surrender to God and resist the devil who wants to capitalize on our flesh. Sub, submit to God, resist the devil, and watch the devil flee. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I pray today that you would anoint this word. Oh God, that you've given me to preach, Lord, and to, to speak, Lord. Father, I pray for all of your children today, Lord, all of those who are truly yours, oh God. And I pray, Lord, that you do a supernatural work today in our lives like we have never, ever, ever experienced before, Lord. Lord, you told Sharon and I, Lord, back in 2003, that you're going to be able to break out. You're going to be breaking out of us. And then you spoke that word emphatically to me, Lord, in 2006, Lord. You gave us that big lantern. I remember that big lantern, Lord. We were lighting that lantern, Father. As the sun was going down and as it got darker and darker outside the sun, it, that, that lantern got brighter and brighter, Lord. And you showed us then, hallelujah, in your holy name, Lord Jesus, you showed us that as this world gets darker and darker and darker, that your people are going to be shining brighter and brighter and brighter. Those who are submitted unto you, those who love you, those who serve you, hallelujah. And we have nothing to fear from man, nothing at all to fear from man. God, just put that deep in our spirits today, oh God. Let us walk in the newness of life. Like we've never walked in it before, oh God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, right here in the book of Acts, chapter 12, we have the story of Herod and Peter and James and the church. And I'm just going to begin to read here. Now, about that time, Herod, who was Herod was the king of Judea, hallelujah, appointed by Caesar. Okay. This was the world empire at the time was Rome. Oh, hallelujah. And Herod, he stretched, he, he was the king, he stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. He cut off his head 
he killed him with the sword cut off his head hallelujah see because Herod was was trying to get uh what was was trying to hallelujah get favor with the people so he killed James the brother of John with the sword and because he saw it pleased the Jews it pleased the Jews to see bloodshed and today you know many Christians out there it pleases them to see Muslims slaughtered okay by American troops or by British troops it, it pleases many Christians today to see bloodshed and filth of this world and many so-called pastors and preachers and prophets it pleases them to see bloodshed yeah and because he saw it please the Jews he proceeded further to take Peter also now then were the days of unleavened bread it was the feast time of the Passover and when he had apprehended him he apprehended Peter arrested him and put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people now you see the pagans celebrated Easter okay which is Ishtar which is the fertility goddess okay the Sun God I mean they, they celebrated Easter okay but as Christians God wants us to celebrate the Passover to remember that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the atonement hallelujah he is the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world God wants us to remember that every single day and celebrate that truth every day by surrender and by submitting to God hallelujah oh hallelujah glory to God hallelujah hallelujah Peter therefore was kept in prison Peter was kept in prison Peter was kept in prison hallelujah but prayer but prayer but communion but supplication but crying hallelujah was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him the church was a praying church in the first century and today there are many who pray many who are learning more about prayer we can all all of us together learn more about prayer if you're not born again today and filled with the Spirit of God you can still pray you can pray to God you can say God if you're real prove yourself to me show me God please God I'm one of these people, Lord, that needs to see. i got to see something before I believe it. Please let me see something today. Just cry out and say, Lord, please let me see something today that shows me that you are real so that I don't have to keep living this flesh-filth life that I've been living. That this life of the world, this life of being bound by chains down here in this prison of this of this filthy vile wicked world that I can be transformed and renewed and get a new spirit and I can be born anew from heaven hallelujah be seated in heavenly places in my Savior the Lord Jesus Christ see see when you're born anew you become part of the body of Christ hallelujah you become a new creation hallelujah you are an adopted son hallelujah adopted son or daughter hallelujah filled with the Spirit of God not the, not the filthy spirit of this world. Hallelujah. Praise God. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. See, the two chains, the world and the devil had Peter bound with two chains Peter's bound against the wall he, he can't go anywhere hallelujah and behold now let, let me stop right there at verse 6 Peter's tap he's bound with two chains hallelujah oh glory to God 
And here's Peter. And, and you can see the devil. See, the devil's trying to, he's trying to shut Peter up. He knows if I can kill Peter, then I can really do some damage to the church. So he has Herod arrest Peter, and Peter's bound with two chains, and he's bound up. But what's happening as a result? See, the devil always thinks He's going to do something, hallelujah, to hinder God's people. But what turns up happening, hallelujah, the church comes together. The church, the called out ones. Not the building down the street with the steeple on it. No, 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 no. No building can do anything. No organization of man can do anything. Only a born anew from heaven filled with the Holy Ghost people who can touch God, hallelujah, who can go boldly to the throne of grace by the blood of Jesus can, can have access to God, see, beyond the veil, behind the veil, hallelujah, see, we go right in, hallelujah, oh, praise God, hallelujah, we go right in to the throne, hallelujah, so here's Peter, he's kept, and, and the devil thinks he's going to win some kind of victory, but what, what happens is the church comes together, and behold, they begin to pray, see. They, they were praying, verse number 5 of chapter 12 of Acts. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise, up quickly! And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself. And bind on thy sandals. Gird thyself. Put your belt of truth on, Peter. Put on the preparation of the gospel of peace as shoes upon your feet. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Cast thy garment about thee. See the cloak of zeal. In Isaiah chapter 59, it talks about, Oh, hallelujah. Let me go back there. Isaiah chapter 59. Oh, praise God. The Word of God is so rich. If you don't love the Bible, I pray that you do today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 59, it says, in verse 16, let me read verse 15. Yea, truth faileth, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. Oh, isn't that true? Peter had departed from evil. Peter had believed the gospel. Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost of the Almighty God, and he departed from evil. He made himself a prey, yeah, and the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment, and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor, no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. And what this means is God has done the work, hallelujah. God, the Almighty God, became a man. He did the work as a man, praise God. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and an helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. With zeal as a cloak. Now we're going to come back to this chapter in just a minute. Hallelujah. So here's Peter put his garment on. The angel said, Gird thyself, and bind thy sandals. And bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. See, we got to follow the Lord today. Hallelujah. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Peter was thinking he was having a dream or a vision. He, he, he didn't know what was going on. God was intentionally keeping Peter from knowing what was going on on saints and that's what he'll do in our lives he continually he will keep us from seeing what's going on in many situations okay and it is a protection for us hallelujah hallelujah when they were past the first and the second ward they came unto the iron gate that leadeth into the city which opened to them of his own accord 
And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. O oh, hallelujah. Verse 11, And when Peter was come to himself, now, 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 when, when the angel departed, Peter came to himself. He, woo, he goes, wow, oh, man. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod. Ooh, glory to God. And from all the expectation of the people of the Jews, of the people of the synagogue of Satan, see, God delivers his people. Hallelujah. Praise God. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. And many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Now this, this young girl, she, she hears Peter's voice, and she knows it's Peter, and she's all excited, and she, she runs and tells him, Peter's at the gate. And they said unto her, verse 15, Thou art mad. Now this is a sad thing today, saints. They, they said unto her, Thou art mad. But see, we got to remember that when we pray, God hears our prayers. And when we pray, we pray with thanksgiving, giving thanks and praise unto our God. Hallelujah. We praise Him and we worship Him. We thank Him for all the many multitudes of answered prayers. And we know when we pray according to the will of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, that's what it means, according to His will, for His glory, God is going to answer. God is going to answer. So we don't want to be like these first century Christians. They said, thou art mad. They didn't, they didn't, did they really believe, have the full assurance? They really had a little doubt, didn't they? See, and we do that too. Sometimes we have a little doubt. We go, oh, and Lord, we pray, Lord, you take out every bit of doubt. Let it be gone out of us. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And they said unto her, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. She was constantly telling him, it, it's true. Peter is at the gate. He's at the gate. He, it's true. He is there at the gate. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. You got to keep pressing in. You got to keep going in forward more and more and more with the Lord. And, and, and just if people are just laughing at you and mocking you and saying, hey, you can't do that. Hey, God's not going to do that. And you know God is going to do it because you've been praying in faith and believing. You keep standing and believing. Hallelujah. This is a word for me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thou art mad, they told her, but she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, it is, it is his angel. It is his angel. Okay? They, they, so they made up something else instead of just believing. It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, continued knocking. He, he, was, he was banging on the door, knocking. He continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Wow, this is really hitting me right now, saints. They were astonished. They were astonished. They, it was like God let them be astonished. It, see, sometimes God allows us to be in situations where we, we're, we're being attacked with all these things, you know, doubt and fear and discouragement and stuff like that. And God allows it to show us that spirit to, so we can identify that spirit because there's other tests coming down the road that are going to be harder than the tests we're going through today. See? And so, so as God allows this to happen and then we press on through, we press on through and he, and he delivers and he sets us free. He brings us out of the said prison that maybe we're in, the situation, the circumstance. Then God delivers us. Hallelujah. Then we're stronger in the faith and the next time we don't doubt as much. See, we don't, we can't doubt God. We got to believe, see? Hallelujah. It says in Hebrews that God, it, let me go over there, Hebrews 11, 6. It says, it's important to know the Word of God, too. You need to get in the Bible and read it. There's life in the Word, see? If you believe, there's life in the Word. If you don't believe, if you're not a believer, if you're one of those who reject Jesus Christ, who reject the work that He did, who reject Him, then you're not a believer. 
See? Then the Word of God means nothing to you. The Holy Scripture means nothing to you. But when you're a believer, oh, it means everything. It's the Word of God. Listen to this. But without faith, Hebrews 11, 6, it is impossible to please Him. It's impossible to please God without faith. Many people in the world today, they think they're doing good. They're going to make it in by doing good works. By giving their money to the Shriners Hospital. Or, or doing this or doing that. To help people. They, but, but they don't have faith. They refuse Jesus Christ. They refuse the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have no faith. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. See, we got to diligently seek the Lord. Oh, praise God. They were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, he's like telling them, be quiet, shh, be quiet, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. James, the brother of the Lord, not James the apostle. And he departed and went into another place. Oh, hallelujah. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what was become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. Now, Peter killed those soldiers. See, Peter, uh, I mean, not Peter, excuse me, Herod. He killed the soldiers who we're supposed to be keeping Peter bound up. See, you cannot bind, the devil cannot bind up the child of God. Hallelujah. Now, we got to remember this today. The devil can't bind us up. We have access to the throne. Hallelujah. By the blood of Jesus Christ. See, we overcome the dragon, the, the evil spirit entity of this world uh, order, this cosmos that we are down in right now on this earth. Okay. When we're on this terra firma in our clay temples, we have, a, we have a clay temple now. We are the temple of the Lord. See? So we're walking down here, but the devil, hallelujah. See, he cannot, he cannot stop what God wants to do. Hallelujah. He cannot stop what God wants to do. Oh, praise God. So Herod, he didn't understand that, and neither did the keepers of the prison, but Peter, he got out. Hallelujah. How? By the mighty hand of Almighty God who sent his angel down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we have those angels encamped around us, saints. I had a vision one time. Me and my wife were going through such a warfare. We're always in the battle. we got to stay in the battle, saints. We are in a battle. And we are the victorious ones. See, that's the good thing. See, when nations go against each other, they don't know who's going to win, okay? They don't know the, those, those soldiers in that company. You know, there's a company of 30 men or 40 men or whatever or division. And they don't know if they're going to win this particular battle, okay? But see, we know we're going to win. Hallelujah. Because our Savior, the captain of the host, the almighty God in the flesh, has won. Hallelujah. He's won already. So if we do what he says, we have the victory, see? We obey his commandments. We walk in victory. We walk in power. We walk in the dominion. Hallelujah. Praise God. And when Herod had sought for him, found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. Now, let me go back over here to Isaiah chapter 59. Okay, and it's talking about the intercessor. God couldn't find any intercessor. So God himself became the intercessor. God himself became a man, born of a virgin. Hallelujah. See? And he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal. And that word zeal there is jealousy, jealousy as a cloak. See, we have to be jealous for the things of God as the saints of the almighty God. See, the church that calls itself the church, most for the most part, they're not the, the real, true, living organism that Jesus Christ has raised up on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. See, 
back in the first century, when, when the, the word went forth, they, they went about, the Bible says they turned the world upside down. You know, they, those, those Jews and those people say, oh, these are those that have turned the world upside down. They come here also. They're all pissed off because these people come in and they're preaching this different teaching about the resurrection from the dead. Hallelujah. See, Jesus isn't in the tomb anymore, people. He's risen from the dead. Now, you tell me how many people have risen from the dead of their own accord. Hallelujah. See, now there have been many people. Dorcas comes to mind. Peter prayed, and then he turned around and spoke to her dead body and said, Get up. And she got up. Hallelujah. See, and there have been other testimonies of people coming back to life from the dead. But nobody has done it like Jesus. Nobody. Because Jesus is Almighty God in the flesh. See? See, world, you have to understand if you if you want to under if you want understanding, if you want knowledge, if you want wisdom, not the wisdom of this world, but the wisdom of Almighty God. Oh hallelujah. See? The Bible says in one John chapter two verse twenty that we as believers we who are filled with the spirit of God have an unction oh we have an anointing from the Holy One from the Holy Ghost and we know all things that's what it says John one John chapter two I'm gonna read that verse because it's so important hallelujah oh praise God oh the Lord is so good you know when when you start preaching the Lord comes upon you hallelujah and all of us are called to preach the word all of us are called to to serve the Lord with our mouths open our mouths and let the Lord fill it hallelujah oh praise God verse 20 of 1 John chapter 2 but ye have an unction from the Holy One and ye know all things oh praise God ye know all things Woo. Now that's a big verse. It's not that very very big in uh, in words, but it's it's huge. It's humongous. It's bigger than the universe. Hallelujah! That one little verse. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. See, it's just as it's just as simple and as plain as just humbling ourselves, saints, and saying, Father, you see this? You see what I'm going through here? Lord, I humble myself before you. I don't know the way of escape. I'm in prison in this, Lord. I don't know how to get out. Lord, show me. Please show me, God. Please show me. When you do that, Father will meet you. Hallelujah. If you're not saved today and you need salvation, because you do, if you're not saved, you need salvation. And there's no salvation in any other but the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not going to find it in money. You're not going to find it in possessions. You're not going to find it in drugs or rock and roll music. You're not going to find it in blues music. You're not going to find it in any kind of music. You're going to find it in the one who died on the cross and rose from the dead on the third day. Hallelujah. That's where you'll find it. But you have to humble yourself to get it. And you have to believe and you have to repent. You have to repent of your sins and believe the gospel. Believe the good news that God has done the work and wiped out the curse. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So now we see in Herod, verse 20, was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. Hallelujah. And upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. Oh, he, he made a speech unto them. Oh, hallelujah. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. That's what they said. It is, a voice, uh, it is the voice of a God and not of a man. And this is what they're going to do in this time, saints. Hallelujah. The people of the world are going to go, Oh, it's the voice of a God and not of a man. Oh, they're going to see some man, some world dictator is going to come on the scene. And they're going to go, Oh, he's the one. Woo! They're going to be worshiping him and bowing down to him. All those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world will worship this beast. Will worship that beast in that day. 
like these people were worshiping Herod. Oh, but let me read verse 18 of chapter 59 of Isaiah. It says, according to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay recompense. Verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, oh, Herod was coming in like a flood upon the church. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Oh, hallelujah. Verse number 22 again of Acts chapter 12. And the people gave a shout saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately... Immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. Verse 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Oh, hallelujah. See, the word of God grew and multiplied. Oh, Slewfoot the devil thought, ha ha, I got him down. I got Peter arrested. I'm going to kill him, hallelujah, like I did James. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, that's what the devil does all the time. I got him now. Oh, look at him. Oh, they're squirming. Oh, look at him. And then God steps in, boom, and, and boy, the Lord, the Red Sea parts, praise God. We go up to the mountaintop. We remember that we are chosen vessels of the Almighty God, filled with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And it says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord would have you know today that his word is true his word is true and many of you might be hearing my voice today you might be hearing who is that man speaking I'm just an ordinary man I'm just a man that loves God me and my wife together minister and we love God and God you know you can't minister something that you haven't experienced that you haven't been through we've been in many prisons prisons of doubt fear, discouragement. We've been in prisons. We've been in prisons of drink and drugs. You know, we've been in these prisons of the flesh and the world and the devil, the prison of, of the media. You know, we've been in these types of prisons and God has delivered us out of them all. Hallelujah. He is the almighty God. Father God, I praise you and I worship you today, Lord. And I pray for any hearing this, Lord, whatever day or night they will hear it. Father, I pray that you would touch them, Lord, with a supernatural touch from heaven. God, I pray that you would reveal themselves, reveal yourself to them, Father, as you did to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. Lord, there's some people searching today, Lord, and they're searching with a contrite heart. I pray you meet them today, Lord. Those who don't have a contrite heart but you intend to save, I pray, Lord, you step up the work Send your holy angels to step up the work in the Holy Ghost with the power of the Holy Spirit in these people's lives, Lord, to get them on the narrow way, Lord. There's, we have to stay on the narrow way. Lord, help your people today. Help us all. Keep us focused upon you, loving you, praising you, glorifying you, O oh God. Hallelujah. And crush every work of darkness. Let it manifest today to many to all of your church, Lord, that you are the Almighty God and you have finished the work. You have crushed every work of darkness. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, I want to let you know that uh, we're going to be, hopefully, every morning during the week, just giving a word so that God's people will be strengthened. Because, see, we all need each other in the body of Christ. Nobody is an island and and we have to pray for one another. We have to lift each other up. And we have to keep our focus upon the Lord. And, and pray without ceasing. And that means just always be in communion with God in our hearts. As we're going about our day doing the dishes or cleaning the house or working at the factory. Or, you know, driving the police car or whatever you do. It doesn't matter, you know. I mean, whatever assignment the Lord has you in. Pray without ceasing. Giving thanks unto God. 
and let let the Lord know your heart. God, you know, you speak. See, out of the out of the mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So God knows what's going on. He can see our heart. Okay, be honest with God. And and I'm going to tell you, God wants to meet many of you today. You, you've been searching a long time for for truth and for for help. And God wants to meet you today. Come to God. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Repent of your sin and believe the gospel. And it's not about going to a building. It's not about being a Lutheran or a Catholic or a Protestant. It's not about that. Or a Baptist. It's not about that. It's about being a born again one. Hallelujah. A born again one. Let me let me read this verse to you right here in Acts chapter 5. This is this is very important, you know. People have asked us, where do you go to church? What what denomination are you from? You know, and and we always, you know, tell people this verse here in Acts chapter five. Now, I'll set it up for you. The apostles were all arrested. They were preaching in the temple, and the Jews, the religious authorities, ha, ha they're not gonna have this. I mean, hey, they're drawing people away from us. There goes our money. <laughs> You know, they don't want that. So they arrested them and they put them in prison, see. And, and so it says here, it says, verse 17 of Acts chapter 5, Then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. They had indignation. They were so pissed. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But, here we go again, but, hallelujah, the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, now this is Acts chapter 5, I just got through reading Acts 12, God sent the angel of the Lord to get Peter out. But right here, God sent the angel of the Lord and got all the apostles out. Hallelujah, we have a mighty God. Hallelujah, praise God. He's, and the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Oh, hallelujah. All the words of this life. Now, see, we, we follow the life. Hallelujah. And the life is not overcome by death. Oh, praise God. The life lives forever and so when you become a believer you live forever hallelujah praise God and the Lord would have you know that he's done the work and we need to rest in him we need to keep our focus upon him and we need to walk with him and talk with him daily and you can come to him today just humble yourself believe the gospel believe the truth of the word of God and God will bless you. And God will fill you with his spirit. Repent of your sins today. Repent of doing it your own way. You, th you think, you know, you're going to make it in by doing something, good works and stuff. It don't, it, it don't get you in. It's the words of this life. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the living word. And he's at the Father's right hand, resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah. And he wants you. He, he loves you. He does. He loves you. You just don't know the deep awesome agape that God is that, that he loves you and he became a man so that he could help you to become one who is filled with the divine nature See, one who is filled with the righteousness with the holiness with the redemption hallelujah with the salvation that he is hallelujah see we become partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. If you want true life, you got to come to Jesus to get it. You're not going to find it in this world. You're not going to find it anywhere but in Jesus Christ. The life is in the blood, the Bible teaches us. And when the blood is gone out of these clay vessels, that life, it goes to God to be judged. And Jesus has already took in the taken the judgment for all those who will receive him. He's taken all that judgment. And we have to be in Christ today, saints. Let us go into him more and more and more and more today. Father, I thank you for this time. 
of, of worshiping you, Lord, and praising you. Father, I pray that you bless every heart. Lord, I pray you draw in those that are lost that you intend to draw to the Son. All whom the Father brings to Jesus will come, Jesus said in John chapter 6. So if you feel the Lord, Father God, bringing you to the Son, you just come. Just kneel down right now where you are and just say, God, I want you. Lord, do it. I repent. I'm sorry, God. Just make a good confession to God right now and believe the truth. And the Lord will save you. You will be filled with His Spirit. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Hallelujah.